evening. And welcome to Q&A. Well, many people spend their lives considering big questions about the meaning of life and the existence of God. Well, tonight we've got less than an hour. But we do have a very good panel. One of Australia's leading Catholic intellectuals, Father Frank Brennan. Renowned journalist and atheist, Christopher Hitchens, who's in Australia to deliver the opening address at the Festival of Dangerous Ideas. Social commentator and founding editor of The Monthly, Sally Warhaft. And uh, politics lecturer and former spokesman for the Islamic Council of Victoria, Walid Ali, and deputy director of the Sydney Institute, biographer and commentator, Anne Henderson. Please welcome our panel. Let's say when a baby falls out of a high-rise building and bounces on the grass below, that must be God. And when uh, millions of children die every day for the lack of pure drinking water and just die of diarrhoea, in a banal manner, that's because God moves in a mysterious way or isn't involved at all. So I think we're off to a racing start, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on the key question, anyway. Frank Brennan, uh, let's hear from you. Do you have any thoughts on the role of an omnipotent God in natural disasters? Natural disasters happen and an omnipotent God lets them happen. Welcome to q and I'm Tony Jones and answering your questions tonight, world-renowned evolutionary biologist and author of The God Delusion, Richard Dawkins. And, wait a minute, <laughs> hold your applause just for a moment. And Australia's most senior Catholic churchman, the Archbishop of Sydney, Cardinal George Pell. Please welcome our special guest. Our skeptic, Michael Shermer, he is an atheist. He's certain God doesn't exist. How can you be so certain? And before you answer, let me also introduce Father Jonathan Morris. He's a Roman Catholic priest and a Fox News contributor who is certain that God exists. Yeah, okay. And one of the essence is that God didn't teach us this. What, what, what is the, to you? I asked him the essence of the book. What is well, the book is about two, two questions fundamentally. One is where did the universe come from? And the other one is why are the laws of nature what they are today? Uh, what do you think? Well, um, some aspects of his previous book, um, Brief History of Time, I, I liked a little better. Uh, you have five minutes to convert <laughs> Penn Jillette. I will be unable to do that. Uh, you know, I, I would just say, I respect your opinion. I think there's a, I have a lot of friends who are atheists and agnostics, so it's not some new thing to me. And um, I think it's hard to convert people other than to invite them to uh, have an experience of God. And I think the thing that I would probably do, not here, would be to talk to you about possible spiritual experiences that you've had and just listen to where you are. But I, I think conversion, as Pope, oh, Francis, let's do that as Pope Francis himself, <laughs> Pope Francis himself called conversion pious nonsense, proselytism, yes. pious mm -hmm. nonsense. So I, I think conversion, as Pope, oh, Francis, do that as Pope here. Francis himself, <laughs> Pope Francis himself called conversion pious nonsense. I'll
It is no mistake that virtually every time you see atheists appear on your TV, there is either a Jesuit or a Jesuit trained spokesperson to offer the official religious response, and it is virtually never a Protestant, or a theistic intellectual from a university, fully capable of doing so. Despite the fact, there are in reality, many who could fill that role very effectively. And it is no mistake that the responses from the Jesuits are always as minimalistic as it could possibly be, with no more spine or backbone in it, than a beached dead jellyfish. The limp responses you see from these very well-placed government-sponsored Jesuits, right alongside the very well-placed, government-sponsored celebrity atheists, are all, very thought out and orchestrated public events. The limp responses from these official Jesuits, charged by the previous now dead popes, to combat atheism, is absolutely no accident either. It is there by design. Even down to the Jesuit denunciation of the idea of spiritual conversion, despite its prominence in history, in the scriptures, in spiritual experience, and even in Roman Catholic doctrine. As you have seen in the previous videos, atheism was created as a Jesuit counter-reformation propaganda to destroy Orthodox Russia and Protestant Europe. Atheism was the creation of the Roman Vatican in an effort to combat the positive effects of the Biblical Reformation, which was seen as undermining the authority of the Pope as God on earth, and bring the end of Orthodox Russia and Protestant Europe, in favor of what the Vatican called the New World Order, also known formally as recently as 1945 as Hitler's Third Reich which was nothing more than an attempt to restore and expand the Pope's old Eastern and Western global kingdom under a restoration of its Holy Roman Empire. After the successful collapse of the Soviet Union and reunification of Europe under Hitler's European Economic Union, the Vatican no longer needed atheism because its purpose had been accomplished. The papacy charged the Jesuits with the task of clean up to get rid of atheism now that its purpose had been fulfilled in destroying its competitors. This was both logical and necessary, because it had been the Jesuits which had been responsible for spreading atheism for the Vatican. However, the papacy discovered monsters are much more easily created, than they are tamed. And once the survival of the Jesuit order became threatened by the papacy, as it had before in history, it did the same thing it had done before, which was to attack the papacy itself, including perhaps, even to the extent of assassinating not just one, but possibly even two, recent modern popes. The same title of power they now hold, despite the swearing of Jesuit vows, to hold no such office. The contract killer is now running the organization. While Jesuit atheism, formed under the corruption of the Borgias as part of the Alumbra in Spain, or later Illuminati movement in Bohemia, under the auspices of the Jesuit Academy, it was no small part of Jesuit history. In fact, the Vatican's propaganda form, became foundational esoteric doctrine of the order of Ignatius Loyola. And the success or failure of atheism as an ideology, was both secretly and historically, tied to the very identity, existence and origin of the Jesuit order itself. Thus why today, Soviet atheism is being promoted in Western Europe and America, and a Jesuit is now the Pope in Rome, ruling on top of a new world order, precisely as the Russian philosopher and author, Fyodor Dostoyevsky, said they were intending to do well over 100 years ago. What we have in America today, is the kind of disinformer right on and brainwashing in our media, in our universities, and in our public scientists, that used to be reserved for and isolated within, totalitarian atheistic countries like the Soviet Union and Cuba, or in right-wing Catholic dictatorships, in Latin America. Unlike what the public is being intentionally brainwashed to believe, there is actually no time in history, where the existence of God, has been more certain than it is today, as a result of what has been discovered in science. From the very existence of God itself, to the creation of the universe by God from its genesis, to the origin of life from clay, to the existence of the supernatural, to even the very real, existence, of both heaven and hell in the afterlife. But you would never know that if you watched TV, precisely as the Jesuit atheists not only would, but do, have it. In the next section in this video, you will be shown why, contrary to what is being told to the public by government-sponsored celebrity atheists and Jesuits, atheism is actually no longer even, a valid scientific worldview. All of its supporting claims in science, 
have been utterly and completely demolished, and the exact and precise opposite, proposed by theistic unification for centuries, have become modern, state-of-the-art, scientific fact. Jonathan, it's our house here. I can. All right. So, um, I'm a Christian, and I'm calling uh, to better understand uh, the atheist worldview with respect to the scientific method. There isn't and, one. And so, there, there, there isn't one. Uh, I, yeah. So, atheism isn't a worldview. Um, it's a position on a single issue, and that's whether or not the God exists. <laughs> So atheism isn't a worldview. So atheism isn't a worldview. So atheism isn't a worldview. The book was called De Rerum Natura, or On the Nature of Things. And it carried something in it that turned out to change everything. And the theory is that the world consists of an infinite number of tiny particles. The ancient Greeks called them the things that can't be broken up, and that word for that was atoms. Uh, so and of course it has great resonance to our own, what it, became of science today. Incredible resonance.